on YouTube. Today's video is gonna be about this new profit making method I found or discovered. Well, someone actually kind of told me about it and it actually kind of made a lot of sense. I was doing what's it called Nemesis Currency and Valdos, but I decided to swap it up and move to Lyra Ardain for a Lava Lake map. Reason we do Lava Lake map is the T16, which is very, very good and it also has a good boss and that it spawns a lot of rares which helps out on Nemesis Sexton. I actually did get an exalt on one of the mobs on the side over there which is actually pretty amazing. But the strategy is pretty good because it allows us to use a lot of breach and I'll go more in depth about it pretty much. It's kind of like an alternative to doing Harbinger except I think the startup cost is probably a little bit less because all you need is 4 Chayula stones or four beyond stones instead of one auspicious so this is just one method I discovered I also tried doing Valdos today a lot and it was okay it was, they're both pretty similar in currency per hour and I just wanted to go over how you actually do these methods because people are probably trying to find some other way to make currency besides doing what's it called turn zen tropical island delirium because the map is pretty hard for tropical island compared to 60% deli even on this map a t16 so this is probably a lot easier for people who have like worse gear and it's probably and it's actually much better money per hour than doing the tropical islands but I'm going to go over my gear again a little bit first. I didn't really make many upgrades in fact I kind of wanted to show you my tab because I did track it with excellence and so everyone will be able to see exactly how much currency I made and what actually the money comes from. So this is pretty much my tab from doing the map the whole day so you can see there's a bunch of stuff in there and excellence does help track it so let's get into the gear overview and then I'm going to go in depth about this new money making method which I believe is probably one of the better money making methods in the league because yeah besides doing 5 way carries which according to some people is up to 100x per hour my gear hasn't really changed that much the biggest thing I actually got was I finally got a 21 20 spark now I thought it would actually add a lot more damage but it wasn't like the greatest increase but it's not too bad it costs around 8x it's actually pretty costly to have to try to actually what's it called to try to corrupt it yourself so you can see it's like 10x you can try to get it down to 8 you can probably get it down to 8 or they're both 10x right now the problem with this, these items, they're so spare, so if people just go out and buy a few of them, they're completely screwed. For the other people, one thing I could recommend is you could try buying the gems and leveling up yourself. If you go see the price of Anomalous Spark, 1920 or 1620 or 1617, it's around like 30 chaos. So even if you say it's a 1 in 8 or 1 in 10 chance to get it, which is probably around there, it's like 300 chaos and then you spend some time leveling it so you actually could make a decent profit leveling up alternate quality gems and trying to corrupt it for 21 because a lot of people are probably lazy doing it so that's just one thing you could do i should probably corrupt some gems because i'm actually not using my offhand at the moment so that's actually kind of bad but as i've always said the nebulous needs to get better i kind of really want to get one with multi and crit chance for spells the helmet I don't really know if I want a suffix or not. I think the only suffix that would benefit me would be Chaos Res for now, but next on the list is probably getting an Aspect of the Spider, but Aspect of the Spider requires a lot of increased mana reservation or reduced rep mana reservation jewels. So I think if I upgrade it so that I get one, two, and then I have maybe this one here, three, four, Four, so I have four more mana reservation jewels to get. So a lot of people always ask me how many RMR or mana reservation jewels are you using? And I'm pretty much using a reservation jewel in every single place except four, which is the two unique jewels, which are just too expensive for my blood at the moment. And then what's it called? And then uh, two regular jewels, which I want more multi and damage. There also comes down to a pretty interesting thing, which is rolling a notable on one of these jewels. So you lose 4% effect of non-curse auras, but you pretty much gain 15% more damage from having an aspect, right? So I do think that is the play, and I probably will incorporate it later on, especially once I get a few more points. Because if you think about it, the whole trade-off is you're losing 4% increased effect of auras, or 3% or whatever, and you're gaining a whole uh, what's it called you're gaining 
So you lose 4% right here and some stats, but you gain 15% more damage on the aspect. So for this one, you would probably just roll like 35% increased effect and pure aptitude or something. And this would actually make the jewel maybe even cheaper. Now the problem with this is you do lose the flat ES. So you might have to lose 6% either from regen. So you could probably lose 6%. So you actually can't do it on the 35% jewel because you actually lose the flat ES. But for this one, you will lose 6%. 6% um, for 15% more damage. So I think it's probably a good trade-off. It will make it harder to get 300%, but that's just one of the ways you could probably get a little more out of your character for pretty cheap. And that's if you have a suffix open, right? But I think that's a pretty good solution later on if I get an open suffix ever. These boots, I definitely need a divine. These boots are actually pretty hard to divine. You kind of want to use the crafting bench, to, or not crafting bench. You want to use the lucky divine on the hoarder crafting station. So here I have reroll the values of the suffixes, right? So let's see if we reroll the values of suffix. Make sure not to press this reforge because you'll just brick the item completely. Reroll the values of the suffix with lucky modifiers. Let's see what we get. 20% tailwind, 8%. So it's slightly better now, right? So you pretty much want like 8 plus percent attack and cast and move speed and 20 plus percent on Tailwind. Ideally, it should be perfect, right? But that's just kind of hard to divine these pair of boots. But definitely, if you're trying to divine it perfectly, make sure to use the Harvest Crafts and save the pretty much the Lucky Divines. The Lucky Divines rolls the value twice and takes the higher of the two numbers. I'm pretty satisfied with my Headhunter. If I was going super late game, I would try for multi and move speed during Flask Effect. I do think move speed is very, very, very important as move speed 11% is pretty much a huge portion. It's actually more than the adrenaline roll on a Quicksilver Flask. So that's something to keep in mind. Hands of the High Templar, I did see a plus 8 pair. A plus 6 Ellie Weakness pair up for 100x, but it got bought out. Not sure by who. And as usual, I will try to be buying the plus 2 shafts to... What's it called? I want to buy a plus 2 shafts to get uh, extra gem levels on Sparks. So there's actually a cheaper way of doing it, right? So a lot of people might get confused about, oh, how come uh, plus two shafts could be cheap? And yet, if you buy it right now, it's only seven, this guy's only selling it for 17 exalts, but you need to make sure the energy shield roll is kind of high. So you can see there's really no good well-rolled ones besides this one for 50 exalts. So the main thing you can do is make sure it's not on six links. So if you're not doing it on a six link, you can see that they're pretty cheap, so you need to make sure one has quality. So this one here, this guy hasn't been on for 7 days though, so it's kind of bricked. So this person is selling it for 5x, and it's kind of well rolled. And 5x, you get the Delve recipe to get 6 sockets, so that's it's already 6 socketed. So you pretty much just need to pay 1500 fusings and 1500 vol orbs, right? And how much is 1500 vol orbs? Let's see. Does anyone even have, like, let's, does anyone have 400 vol orbs in stock? So 1500, let's use it in exalt so it's easier to understand. So it's like 340, so it's at like 160 to 1. Is that actually the ratio? Or is it just because my thing is too high? The 200 to 1, it's like probably like 160 to 1. So it's 10x in Vol Orbs, and then like 10x in Fusings or so. Or like 6x in Fusings, not 10x in Fusings. So 16x plus whatever the, so 16x or so to get it and then the base was like 5x so you're only paying 21 exalts total versus paying like 30 to 40x for one of these rolls right 50x or whatever so these things are probably very expensive and it's pretty much just saving you the hassle of buying all the vol orbs that's just something to keep in mind when upgrading your gear because i do think a lot of people are probably at the point where they can get a plus two shavs but anyhow, let's get on to the bulk of the video and the important part, which is probably the best money making method in Expedition League. So a lot of people always ask me like what exactly is the setup you use for the, what's it called, the farming method. So I try to put it out in a very easy to understand way. So what we have here is we use four Chiula watchstones, preferably you should divide it to around 90% or so. So you can see here in my atlas, we're doing this region and let me show you the atlas passives. So Atlas Passes, we're using all of these. That gives the 10 additional rare monsters and the breach opens and closes faster. And it also has some extra magic monsters. And then for a Blight, we have these that gives more unique monsters and Blight monsters spawn faster. And then this one drops maps with a Blight encounter, which is actually pretty important because you can get a Lava Lake map 
which drops with an additional Blight encounter, which means we won't need to use a Blight Scarab, which means that the map will be even more juiced than before. This snow makes it that we can get more Blight maps from doing it. So overall, those are the watch zones you want to use. 4x Cheula. Beyond is also possibly very good, but it's extremely rare. It's around auspicious waiting, so trying to get four of these 1% beyond is probably not very, very realistic. It'll probably cost you a lot. So the total cost of entry into the map is 113 chaos, and it comes from 28 chaos for a winged breach scarab. You could try to lower the cost by using a gilded breach scarab, so it'd be eight chaos instead of 28 chaos. But when you try to juice maps, you want it to be as juicy as possible, as everything scales multiplicatively off itself. So this one will give you, I think it gives you five scarabs. I'm not 100% sure, but basically, I know I end the map up with yeah, it gives you five scarabs. So this is gilded with three. So the wing will give you five scarabs or five breaches, not five scarabs. And then we can use polished harbinger or gilded harbinger. And then we can use rusted blight if we don't have blight on the map. So if you have blight on the map, you can start using legion. You can use abyss or something else. And then harbinger, you probably will always want to use. But if you get like blight as like area has blight then you want to use another scarab you can also use metamorph scarab which is pretty good uh, so metamorph legion are some other good ones but basically the important one is always to have breach and then this one is also extremely important which is a blood filled vessel so what a blood filled vessel does is it gives you ritual on the map guarantee and ritual is actually insanely overpowered for nemesis stuff because Ritual can have up to almost 40 mobs in it if you or 40 rare mobs in it So if you actually ever look at your head under buff while doing it You can see that you'll gain like 40 head under buffs Meaning that each of those rare mobs has a chance to drop the currency or drops three currency And then we put on three deli orbs. So deli orbs It really just depends on what you want to do. So pretty much I'm not really 100% sure What is the right balance of delirium orbs? You could probably just try 20% or 40% or 60% or even 80%. What you put on doesn't really matter. I'm pretty much just doing it for the extra quant and getting some simulacrum splinters. So you can pretty much use whatever. Obviously, if you want to use skittering scarabs, it'll be a lot more expensive, but you will also uh, come out with a lot more currency. So rolling the map will cost 12 chaos or 17 alks and scours. And what we want to do when we want to roll the map is we want to get beyond on the map so you want to make sure you have beyond on the map and then you put nemesis on the map device so that's how we get beyond with nemesis and then rolling the four sextants that we want which are nemesis beyond alva of no missions and you don't want harbinger drops additional currency i fucked that up so this one let's see harbinger drops additional currency is not the one you want so instead you want wait let's see what i have so what I have is two additional breaches, which is mandatory. So you replace the Harbinger with that one. The Harbinger is for the Valdo's Rest one. And then you have Area Contains Alva if you have no Alva missions. And then you have Area Contains Blight Encounter. So if you get this while rolling it, then you just keep it. And then most important one is Nemesis drops three additional currency. So if you don't have Blight, you kind of want to try to get beyond. So there's a lot of interchangeable ones. So if you get two additional breach, and Nemesis Currency are the mandatory ones in my opinion. This one's 250 weight, this one's 150 weight. So they aren't too bad to roll. And the area contains Alva is probably also kind of mandatory. But it's not the end of the world if you don't have it. It's probably easier to farm some Alva missions or something. And then Blight Encounter is definitely optional. So Beyond can replace the Blight, but I just happen to roll these. So when you roll these, you want to try to sextant block it. So what I mean by sextant blocking is you want to take, say, so like the biggest uh, weightings are just are shrine because it has a huge weighting. So you have shrine, and then you want to have two watch zones that have monster increases. So these have increased lightning mobs and increased physical damage mobs and shrine. So now when you want to roll the watch zone, you pretty much take it and put it into here. And then you start putting your sextants onto it. And that's how you roll it. Because putting these watchstones here means that this one, when you use the sextant, cannot roll shrine. It cannot roll increased damage of fizz and increased lightning damage monsters. And those are the highest weightings. But that will allow you to roll the nemesis sextant and alva sextant and breach sextant at a much higher rate. 
So once we get the sextants, we need to use the scarabs, which are Wayne Breach, Polish Harbinger, Rusted Blight, and Blood Fill Vessel. And these are the sextants you want to block. One, uh, whatever shrine it is, and then two additional mob types of like Fizz, Lightning, Chaos, or whatever. So this does seem like a lot of work, right? So you put in the map, and then you make sure that you choose Nemesis. Make sure you have to have Nemesis. Make sure you put the Lyrum Orbs on the map, or the map is not going to be that profitable. And then if you have Alva missions that you're planning to use, make sure you choose Alva. But then if you don't, don't choose anything and just rely on the sextant. So the output is around 500C on average from what I've done in like a 7 or 8 map sample size. And the profit comes out to around 3 to 4x once you take into account the total cost of the map. And this includes all of the rolling costs and everything. Now how long does it actually take to do the map? It takes around 15 to 20 minutes. It probably takes you 5 minutes to clear it, 10 minutes to loot it if you're fast. Maybe a little faster if you use like a auto clicker or whatever. Or not auto clicker, but a scroll wheel rebound thing to loot faster. But this time does not account for selling all the stuff. So you can see I literally put all of the items into this dump tab. So it's all here, ready to be sold. So let's go look at excellence to see what exactly is here. So most of the stuff you think would be like too low value, but what I did was I removed all of the items that are under 5 chaos to sell in stacks. So this is pretty much everything here. Its total value is above 5 chaos, right? So these are all items you would be able to sell. And if you aren't going to do a 5, like most people here would do a 5 chaos trade, right? So even after removing everything, you only remove like 150 chaos from this net worth total. So everything here is pretty realistic in terms of what you want to be able to get. So let's minimize this a little bit or drag it up. So what is the bulk of the profit? So it seems like exalted orbs are a huge portion of the profit. 7 exalts from doing this. A lot of fusings, 640 fusings, around 2x worth of fusings. And you do get some simulacrums. So we did pick up 2 simulacrums or 600 simulacrum splinters, which is kind of crazy to think about. A lot of scourings, we did pick up 300, they're 0.56. A lot of alts at 146. And even the chance orbs add up, we did pick up 937 chance orbs for 124 chaos. And here's the Cheyula breach zone that we did. And then we also got some splinters of Cheyula down here. So the Cheyula does add a little bit of the profit, it's not the biggest. Now it says I only picked up 90 chaos, but this is wrong. I probably picked up like hundreds of chaos. It's just because I took out some of the chaos in the tab because I was too poor and I needed to buy some things. So, and I needed to buy some more map rolling. So this uh, number here is actually a lot lower than it actually is because I actually took out some chaos to be able to afford to roll the maps. And then Regal Orb. So you can see it's just a lot of random little currency things. Lava Lake, which we got six of. Blessed Orbs. So all of this stuff you can pretty much sell in bulk. Like a lot of Blight Scarabs, Gilded Sulfite Scarabs. Prime Sextons, Awakened Sextons. Awakened Sextons is also a lot higher, probably like a couple, almost 100 or 200, I think, because I took them out to roll more maps. So this, uh, all this like breakdown is not entirely accurate. I think I took out a lot of Awakened Sextons and a lot of Chaos. So this pretty much just gives you a general idea. Most of this stuff is pretty easily sellable. We did get some uniques like Azir's Foible, Reign of Splinters, Fertile Catalyst, uh, Golem Jewel, Primordial Eminence, um, Timeless Templar Splinters at 25. Maven's Invitation, two of them for 6C. So this is all the stuff you would probably be spelling in bulk. So you can see most of the stuff is pretty easily sellable. And it's not really like you're having a bunch of like small currency or 1 Chaos or 2 Chaos trades. We do have 50 stack decks too. But the majority of the profit is probably from just the Exalts, the Fusing, Simulacrums, Cheyula, and alt, alt, Alts and Scours. I... Yeah, so it's pretty much a lot of looting though, but I think the profit is pretty good. So if you say you make around 3x per map on a low end, and then you spend like, you can do like 4 maps or 3 maps, it puts it around like 9 to 12x per hour, which is pretty good. And I think it's probably one of the better money making methods in the game, if it's not like the best. I think it's probably one of the best money making methods in terms of actually playing the game deal. besides 5 ways. I know that people do the 2 gen ah. thing right now. And that some people like to do like log books, but back. log books probably would not reach that amount of profit. And yeah, what's some other ways of making money? Tropical Island is nowhere near like 8x or 9x at all. 
So this method is actually a lot easier to do and pull off in terms of gear requirements than this. This actually requires a lot of gear. A lot of people tell me to try Tropical Island and they actually cannot get the amount of splinters. And it's because they don't have the amount of damage. Tropical Island in the second level is harder than 100% Delirium. And we're doing like 60% Delirium right now. You can also adjust the difficulty by lowering the Delirium orbs to like 40% and it'll probably make it a lot, lot easier. But let's talk about real fast why this strategy works and why it's so good. The main reason why this strategy works is the fact that Awakened Sextants are extremely cheap right now. I don't really know why they're one to one. Last league, when people did the Valdos and Harbinger, these were four to five to one. So you can only imagine if this method got more popular, what would happen? I'm not really sure if Awakened Sextants are this cheap because no one's using it or because this league generates a lot of Awakened Sextants because of 2 gen rerolls, right? So it's hard to say what exactly is spot. happening here, but it does seem like maybe this person here. Oh, I should, probably should have not. Yeah. Should, probably should have bought some of the items, but. It probably seems like this person here might give I a lot of Awakened Sextants or something that causes a market to be flooded with them. Because this is just an absurdly low price, and until this price actually catches up, this money making method will be always the best. And this method will get worse once Awakened Sextants go up in price. But you can start sustaining your Awakened Sextants pretty easily. And it is actually true because I was able to just take it out from here and roll another batch of maps really easily. So that's just something to keep in mind. But this is just like a barrier of entry if the Sextants become too expensive and you have to buy like 50 to 200 to reroll it. And one last thing of note is that you might want to save like another Watchstone just to be able to reroll it. So here I have another Nemesis currency and I just hit it when I was rolling all of these Watchstones. So in the end, you might want to have a couple of these Cheyulas or whatever saved up just in case you roll multiple Nemes Nemesis currencies and you don't want to roll over it. But basically, that's the whole gist of the method. I will put this document in the description down below.
Anyhow, I hope that everyone enjoyed that little clip of the mapping. There is a lot of looting to be done if you look at it. It's actually kind of annoying that there's so much looting, but without great pain, there comes no great reward, right? That's the famous saying. So make sure to keep your wrist healthy, loot away, and you probably will make 8 to 10x per hour. You might hate your life while doing it, but it's worth it, right? Getting those fusings, those alks, those chances. You could make the filter more strict, but it's probably not worth it as picking up little gumball currency when they're all next to each other is better money than make, running another map, right? And rolling another map. And that's just how it is. There's someone who actually run like thousands of delirium maps in the past and they always say that picking up the small currency is always going to be worth it. And that's just how it is because they're all stacked next to each other. So the time you actually spend picking them up is pretty minimal. It just kind of sucks that we have to do so much looting, but yeah. But this Battle Royale mode is never going to pop. I've been waiting in queue for like 10-15 minutes and the numbers just been going down and up and down and up so yeah that's not gonna happen but anyhow I'm gonna put this thing or this uh spreadsheet inside of the video description down below and you can pretty much use this and you can see exactly what watch zones you need to roll what scarabs you need to use what deli orbs and how to roll the maps what sextants you should look for and how to block the sextants and hopefully this helps everyone out and this little document and spreadsheet and that everyone can try this out. I do think it's a pretty cool idea of doing Lyra Ardain because Lyra Ardain is a pretty good region. And I do think it's actually probably one of the best regions for Nemesis currency. And make sure when you do this method that Awakened Sextants don't get too expensive because at a certain point, Awakened Sextants or Wing Breach Scarabs might go so high that it might be no longer worth doing it. But I don't think it will happen anytime soon and I think most people are stuck with what they're doing or they don't have the gear to do it or I don't know they don't invest in the watchstones but you can see my character is almost leveled you actually get pretty good XP doing Lava Lake too because Lava Lake is a T16 map and yeah if you enjoy the content be sure to like and subscribe I hope you have fun doing this money making method I discovered and they see you next time and I hope you find more mirrors and exhausts than I do bye